Okay, what data finally convinced you that 9-11 was not just by 19 hijackers? You know, the final convincing was this molten metal that I learned about. And uh, pretty quick, I'm learning about uh, molten metal pools under both towers after they collapsed and Building 7. Now, Building 7 wasn't even hit by a, a jet, you know, and yet it comes down, and then it's got this molten metal underneath. And where where'd that come from? I mean, you know, the, I hear people say, well, that would be from the metal of the planes. Well, that might work for the towers, possibly, but it sure doesn't work for Building 7. You know, it was 300 plus feet away from the North Tower, and, and no plane hit it. So where does this molten metal come from? This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know? It was just roaring inside. And it was just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. I studied various aspects, and the molten metal is my first topic. It's the one that really caught my interest, and, and the data is just coming together. Now, I have a sample of this molten metal. Previously, it's a molten metal here. Just a tiny sample. This is really all we need. I brought along with me at the last minute. I thought, well, I'll throw that in. And uh, by analyzing this, we determined it is not molten aluminum from the plane. Okay. Uh, indeed, it contains a great deal of iron, uh, which is the product of the thermite reaction. This is thermite. It's a powdered mixture of iron oxide and aluminium, which when ignited burns at two and a half thousand degrees Celsius, which is very, very hot. Packed into the slow release mechanism of a garden flower pot, the thermite is ready for action. Just light the touch paper and stand well back. The fuse triggers the irreversible thermite reaction. As scorching hot meets freezing cold, a fierce battle rages. The smoke clears, and incredibly, nothing remains. As the thermite burns at two and a half thousand degrees, it releases a raging torrent of molten iron, which rains down upon the liquid nitrogen, boiling the glacial mixture away in a plume of vapor and melting the cylinder, leaving just a puddle of white hot iron. A clear victory for thermite. The engine block is the densest part of a car. It's basically a huge lump of metal, and, well, it's very hard to melt. Lucky then, the Brainiacs have plenty of thermite specially packed into the slow release mechanism of a garden flower pot. A big pile on the bonnet directly over the engine block should do the trick. The irreversible thermite reaction begins. Within seconds, the fiery concoction eats through the bonnet, spraying molten thermite into the engine beneath. The devastation continues inside until finally a torrent of white hot liquid metal pours out of the bottom, signaling the inevitable victory for thermite. A quick check confirms a clear path of destruction through the engine. Now this um, thermite is so hot, this molten iron, especially when you mix sulfur in, now it's called thermate. That's the so sulfur added to this molten iron, and it'll just cut through steel through structural steel, for example, like a knife through butter. And we also see this molten, yellow hot molten metal with white wispy ash pouring out of the South Tower just minutes before it's collapsed. And I've shown this video, and uh, it's just amazing. The photographs of that, it's in the NIST report. They say, well, probably molten aluminum from the aircraft. No, sorry, it's not. <laughs> we did experiments at uh, BYU. See, see, that was in the New York Times as the sulfidation of the steel came out. You know, World Trade Center 7, where, there's no airplane that hit it. Where, and so how do you explain this? And then the towers too. And, and the New York Times said this is the greatest mystery uncovered so far. On that, the molten metal pools indicate 
uh, in this case, a large amount of uh, incendiary or explosive material. Super thermite is explosive. Ordinary thermite and thermate are uh, incendiaries. It's true that uh, when you add sulfur to the thermite, it now cuts very quickly through steel. And, and again, do, do you remember earlier I spoke of this paper I read, these uh, uh, metallurgists in Massachusetts had looked at World Trade Center 7 steel and some from the towers also. Strange, they said, that it, 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 high temperature sulfidation. Where does this sulfur come? Where do these high temperatures come from? Well, the answer, you see, we're, we're getting at, it's totally consistent with this, uh, with this uh, ther thermate. Strange, they said, that it, 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 high temperature sulfidation. Where does this sulfur come? Where do these high temperatures come from? Well, the answer, you see, we're, we're getting at, it's totally consistent with this, uh, with this uh, ther thermate.